it's Lucy from My Crazy Craft Life and I'm here today with a design team post for Dyes R Us. Today I'm going to be making this fun pop-up card. It is called a Rockin' Rectangle Pop-Up Card and the die set that I used to create this is from Karen Berninston. I'm also using a stamp set and papers from Kindred Stamps. The stamp set is called Bananas and I do not believe that this is available but that's the stamp set that I used. And to start off with this, I'm going to stamp the image and color it, cut it out. And I'm not going to leave the coloring in here because this is a pretty long video and I wanted to make sure I put in there how to make the card as opposed to just do the coloring, especially because my coloring isn't all that spectac spectacular anyway. But I did stamp it with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And this is kind of a fun stamp set because it gives you different eyes and hair and mouths to stamp to make the images look different. Now those are the colors that I used for the Copic markers. And to start off what I did was I cut out all of the pieces that I'm going to be using. So I cut out this little guy and one thing I like to do with all of my images is to go over it, the edges with a black marker. It just kind of makes it look a little more finished and any imperfections in the cutting it will kind of mask or hide. So to start with, like I said, I cut out all of the, I die cut out all of the parts for this. Now there's a lot of parts here and some you can use, some you don't. A lot of this has to do with how you want to decorate it. Um, I was kind of looking, that square piece that I left in there creates sequins. So if you cut it out of some metallic paper or foil paper, it will create that, but I didn't use that. So I started out by cutting out the panels for an A2 size card so it's four and a quarter by five and a half and the panels I cut down to four inches by five and a quarter and I cut three of them two for the inside and one for the outside front cover of it and then you're going to be taking the panel to create the little window and you will end up cutting that out those two pieces were the mechanism and the rest of this, like I said, is a lot of just what you want to do. Now, I ended up cutting out that large oval with the tapered corners. I cut out, and that I did in yellow. I cut out two different frames, because I'm going to use that. I cut out three of the smaller frames. Now, none of the edges actually completely cut through, so you have to kind of create the frame. If you want the scalloped one, you're going to use one of the rectangles that fit inside of that in order to do that, and depending on what size you want. So that scalloped frame could have actually been a little bit larger, thicker, because I could have used the smaller one, but I ended up using the larger one. So I created two of the frames. I created of the scalloped frames three of the frames with the small and then the middle one. And I'm just going to start adhering the pieces onto the card base itself. So this is just all of the panels that are going into it. And not the smallest rectangle, that's that little tiny one that's going to fit on part of the mechanism if you want to decorate that but the second smallest rectangle. And you're going to adhere that down where you want it. Now you want to give it at least a half an inch on the side of the card so that you have room to place the image or whatever you are using there. I was just trying to line this up pretty center. Now you can do it towards the top or towards the bottom, but again, you want to make sure whatever piece you picked is going to fit in the card and not hang out of it. So now here's one of the frames I created with the smaller and then the larger rectangle. And then I, here's the scalloped frame that I actually created with the larger rectangle and then the scalloped frame. And that's going to go on the front. On the inside I'm just going to put one of the frames that I made with the larger and smaller rectangles. And one tip I will give you, this is really thick, especially with all of those layers. So when I ran it through my die cut machine, it did not cut all the way through. So I actually peeled off the pieces that it did cut through, placed it back on exactly over the top of it, and ran it through again so that it could cut all the way through. The next thing I did there was I put together the piece that's actually going to pop up. So I used that yellow cardstock that I cut from the rectangle with the oval and just placed those pieces there. Now this is the mechanism piece, and the first thing you're going to do is just fold over the flaps or the sides that are out there, 
and then fold them onto each other and adhere them to those. And that's going to give you like two little like leg looking things. The next thing you're going to do is fold up and you're going to do mountain valley, mountain valley when you fold this. And you're going to valley this one. And then the last one is going to be another mountain. And that's going to be part of the mechanism that's going to help with the, to pop up back and forth the, um, or to make it a rocking rectangle on the piece. Now, the little legs that you have there, you're going to kind of flip in those sides of the little feet. And then you're going to put those in the holes in the back of that longer strip. So you're going to pop one in into that hole and then the other little slit that's in there and the die cuts cut these out perfectly so everything fits in there great and then you're just going to kind of make sure that those are there now I do adhere mine down I want to make sure that they're going to stay and they don't slip out I also put especially on the one that's out I put down some um, glue onto it just to kind of make sure that it's going to stay there and stay in the right area. The next thing you're going to need to do is to get some adhesive onto this. Now the adhesive is actually going to be on the top of that little flap on the left of that piece that I'm holding there. On the top on the larger piece all the way at the end. And then on the back or the bottom piece of the little flap that's the little mechanism with the legs and that's the piece that's going to adhere to your card base and then the other flap at the opposite end is going to adhere to your card base so here I'm just gluing that down to make sure that stays there now I don't put a decorative piece over that because that's going to be covered up with the piece that's going to have the image on there and stuff so that's it. That's the mechanism and that's kind of how it works. And it is much easier to put these pieces on, the decorative pieces, the layering pieces, now than to try to do it after you already have it adhered to your card. So I would suggest doing that. I do not put the sentiment just because I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do, but I did end up cutting that out of the little oval and using a piece of yellow on that. And that worked out pretty well. So here's the top of the flap and I'm going to put some strong double-sided adhesive on there. This is the bottom of the little leg um, piece with the little legs and feet and then this is the top where the piece, the decorative piece is going to go with your image and the frames and stuff on there. And like I said I just put that all over there and then you're just going to have to line this up and this is super easy to line up because what you're going to do is you're first going to put it down right about where you want it. Now I check to kind of see where it's going to lay and I'm, I'm fine with it being a little above the center because the sentiment will go right there in, the, in that blue area with the panel. So now once you do that, you're just going to butt it right up against the score line, not over the score line, but butt it up against it, and then take your adhesive off and just fold it. So that's it. That's all you have to do with that. Now, for the other side, you're going to pretty much do the same thing, but you're just going to flip it over to the other side. So make sure your mechanism is folded up where it's supposed to be. I was just I was fiddling around with this because I wanted to make sure that it was going to work properly and I couldn't wrap my head around for that moment where the piece was going to go and how it was going to stay in there but I finally figured that out so you just fold it up make sure it's folded in the direction that it's supposed to go in lay it down on the opposite side so the side with the panel line it up and then just fold your card over so that's it. Pretty simple. Now that top piece is going to be, like I said, where you're going to stick your image or the frames or how it, whatever you're going to end up putting there. For this one, like I said, I used that larger rectangle with the cornered 
the corners rounded. I made that scallop frame with a thinner frame and then I popped on just a, that rectangle piece underneath my image. Now I'm going to take off all of these pieces and I wanted to make sure that this was lined up since I have that center rectangle underneath the image I wanted to make sure that that lined up with the window so that we didn't have any lines there. So I just figured out where that went, held it in place, and then popped it right on top of the mechanism. And that's it. That is how that whole mechanism works. And the rest of this is really just decorating adding your sentiments, what you want to do, and how you want to do it. Like I said, I ended up cutting out that oval that's part of the die set to stamp feel better real soon, and that is actually from a Paper Smooches stamp set that I got that from. This is going to a friend of mine who um, had dental work done, and she's not really too happy or feeling too well, so... I used one of the little squares that I had cut out and I cut the sentiment that says hello there so that I can make make it not go across all the way across so that it lines up on top of each other. And then I also used the sentiment I've got my eye on you from the banana stamp set. I'm going to end up stamping that just on a strip, cutting that strip out and then just fishtailing one end of it. And that is how I'm going to decorate that those things and put those on there. Now I do end up popping up both of the sentiments with some foam tape and some foam squares actually. And then I add sequins and wiggly eyes to this just because I think they were fun. And that's what I ended up using for this. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave them below. I hope you subscribe to this channel. Go check out Dyes R Us for tons of dyes at very reasonable prices. And make sure you like, and I hope everybody has a great day. Take care, and stay healthy.